Thanks to the supporters of channel member Alan Todd. Well, for the second season in a row, we go into the summer as Premier League champions, but a little bit differently to last time. This year, we've got £70 million to spend. It's... I mean, it's going to be spectacular. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 44 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special after a season in which the game describes us as having done the double. So I'll take it. The big one. The competitions everybody wanted. The Premier League and the Community Shield. We've obviously got the Community Shield coming up later in the episode as well. I know last, last summer people were a bit confused that we didn't do much transfers. But it was still a big video. If it looks like a big video, that doesn't necessarily mean I've done all the transfers. You have got the Community Shield coming up in this video as well. It's a tradition when we get to this stage of the safe. But let's do our season review stuff. I mean, that says it all, how few players we brought in. Um, obviously, we brought Lewis Shepard in on loan, who was great. We'd love to bring him in permanently. Javi Ott was here on loan the previous year, and we did make that deal permanent. And he was great. 16 assists coming from a right back this season, but there is no question at all who the signing of the season is, despite the fact he was a club record fee. Very expensive player, but Sergio Delgado, still only 23 years old, 44 goals from 44 appearances and 17 assists thrown in there as well. So what's that? 60 goal contributions in 44 matches and an average of 7.7. .7. I think it's safe to say we've got the best striker in the world right there. And he uh, will hopefully fire us to Champions League glory before too long. The board were looking for us to qualify for the Champions League, which we did. For, what is that, the third season in a row now? Back-to-back so, uh, -back Premier League champions, 12 points clear this time. Although it did, it wasn't that, we weren't that far ahead all the way through. It does make it look like we had no real competition. Obviously, going into yesterday's episode, Man City did still have a chance. But once we beat them, it looked very impressive for us. And Southampton also making it into the Champions League spots. The changing of the guard in English football continues. This is it's one of the reasons I want to go back to Germany because they just still have Bayern Munich winning the league every year. The Premier League is changing. I don't know how much of that is because I've been working in this league for, what, eight years now, both with Peterborough and Norwich, and we're ha we are affecting the shape of the Premier League by just being there, being part of that elite group. It's forcing other clubs out or if the Premier League's just more likely to shift up and change. But you look at La Liga, you look at Bundesliga, you look at Ligue 1, you look at Serie A, the other four big leagues, they all just have the same teams winning all the time. We need to go and change things up a little bit in there. We need to topple some more giants. There's your season review matches. The 9-0 win against Besiktas was ridiculous. We also put seven past Leicester, and our goal of the season went to Delgado. Can we see goal of the season now? We still can't. People always tell me, Kev, there is a way... I promise you, there's nothing there clickable. The only thing we can click is Delgado, and it just shows us Delgado. We know what Delgado looks like. There's nothing clickable on there to see goal of the season. I don't believe it's possible to do. Um, club reputation is still four and a half stars. We haven't picked up any new sponsorships or anything this year, but I mean, it says we haven't, but our sponsorship revenue has gone from 37 million to 53 million. And this is the thing. If we're not going to expand the ground... And we're going to try not to rely on selling players. This is the thing that's going to allow Norwich to stay as a European superpower after I've gone. If we can keep increasing this sponsorship revenue each year, our transfer debt is about £90 million. I think a good target is if we can get that sponsorship revenue to the point where it outweighs the current transfer debt, then we're leaving the club in a very, very strong position going forward. Broadcast revenue is down slightly which, again, I don't really understand how this works. It seems to be down year on year. I think it's because part of it doesn't get paid until after this is done, but it doesn't take the part from the previous year into account on here at the time. It's a weird thing. Uh, but we won the Premier League and we got to the semi-final of the Champions League. Broadcast revenue is probably going to be the highest it's ever been at the club. Corporate and hospitality is up. Prize money is up because of that improved Champions League performance. And match day revenue is up as well. We've done seven, nearly £7 million pounds of merchandise business. Over half a million shirts sold. Delgado, Pedro Luis and Schultz, as you would expect, the three top shirt sellers. And this was our team of the year. Hoy and Hallen goal. Aaron Ur, Mura, Fernandez and Paviot. Navarro behind Janicek and Tipple. And then Schultz, Delgado, Pedro Luis. No one's arguing with that. That is our best team. 
Um, whether it will continue to be our best team going into this season, there is an odd one out in there in the shape of Navarro. And the longer this goes on, the more I am tempted to finally take the plunge and move Tipple back and give Griffin Diaz a regular spot in this starting eleven, Or the alternate plan with £70 million to spend is go out and sign a new midfielder, either to play in the Navarro role or to play in central midfield and allow Tipple to drop deep. I think that's the, the position we need to be looking to strengthen this summer. Um, Awards-wise, I won Premier League Manager of the Year. Again, uh, club awards, fans player of the year was Delgado. He also got young player of the year, signing of the season, goal of the season, top goal scorer. He's quite good, Delgado. Um, Schultz got most assists at 17, but then Delgado's back to round off the awards with most man of the matches, top average rating, and Noel got best pass completion. Competition award. I don't know what the Adidas European Golden Shoe is. That must be from the season before. I think that's top scorer in Europe last year. Is Pedro Luis. I imagine Delgado has won it for this season that's just happened. Um, the Trophy Samba Door, which apparently is Brazilian Player of the Year or something. Pedro Luis got that. Young Player of the Year, Paviot. Football Writers Player of the Year, Delgado. PFA Player of the Year, Delgado. Premier League Golden Boot, Delgado. He's also set the club record for most goals in a season um, and most assists in a season. It was also gone to Delgado, even though Schultz got the same number of assists. So I'm not sure how that's been decided because Schultz was awarded it there, but Delgado gets it here. They should certainly be sharing that one. Delgado sets the club record for most man of the matches in a season. Domingo, worst discipline at the club ever. Delgado, as we know, is the highest transfer ever paid. And Tammy Abraham, our oldest goal scorer, a record that's going to stand for a long time because Tammy Abraham does retire this summer and become an under-18 coach for us. And we don't have anyone anywhere near his age at the club. I think we're going past the days of needing an Alvarez, needing an Abraham, needing that old man. Some of these youngsters who we brought in way back when have now got a lot of games and a lot of experience under their belt. I think the fact we've got someone like Pedro Luis there, although he's only 26, he's got four full seasons in the Premier League under his belt. I don't think you need to bring in an old guy to replace Abraham when you've got the likes of Pedro Luis with all that experience. Um, let's just flick through the rest of this stuff. Club expectations. Um, they're looking for us to qualify for the Europa League, which is weird because they went to the Champions League last year. I never believe all this stuff. What is interesting on here is expand the stadium it is now part of the five-year plan. They've never shown any interest in doing that before. But that is interesting. If we can... Um, if we can convince them to get that up and running now, that's another step in the right direction towards growing this club into being a, a big deal. Um, we're going to qualify for the Champions League. They're happy with that. Um, we're going to get to the latter stage of the Champions League. They're happy with that. Everything else we will leave as is. That's our best 11, according to star rating. It's also the team of the year from last year. I think, oh no, Zamorano's in there ahead of Janicek, which is interesting. He very rarely plays ahead of him. Training camp destination will go to Florida. Um, here's confirmation of all these awards. So we just need to give everybody a little tickle for winning them. In fact, we can't tickle one player more than once. So we're not going to do much tickling at all. Um, Hoy and Howe was runner up for Premier League Golden Glove. There's my manager of the year award, which is lovely stuff. That's the PFA team of the year. Got a very familiar look to it. Aaron Murra, Fernandez, Paviot, Tipple, Janasek, Pedro Luis, and Delgado all in the PFA team of the year. Um, and that concludes season review and awards things, I think. Just a couple more bits coming through, but these are all confirmations that we already know about. Um, the board are providing... Oh, 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 right. We've got a cash injection of £20 million, but that's the really exciting thing. The board plan to build a new stadium. Forget expanding the stadium. We're getting a new stadium. Nothing's confirmed. We know nothing about it. The board have announced plans to build a new stadium. We're in the process of searching for suitable sites and possible investors. The main reason is because we need to accommodate a bigger crowd. The board have, however, pointed out this will not be a smooth process as it will be some time before the plans can be finalised and put into action. I imagine it's not something I'm ever going to see then because that's like a five-year project when they've got nothing nailed down just yet. I don't think we're going to be moving in before the end of the series, unfortunately, but it is something... We'll be able to check in on on the five years in the future, I would think. Who knows? We might keep the series going forever, yet. Yeah? Things might be, uh, be about to take a turn. I might have a terrible summer. Hopefully I won't, because we've got all this money to spend. 
and not much to spend it on. I need to make a decision about whether or not we bring Lewis Shepard in for another year. I'm not sure at the moment. We might try and do a deal with City. We're certainly not going to spend 90 million on him. I'm not really keen on loaning him for a year. And how much? If we could get him for like 40 million, 45 million, with a lot of it on the never never, then I'm more interested. Even 50 million on installments, as long as we're not going to do it all up front. Yeah, we're putting a lot of this. We're not doing more than 50 million, including the installments. Silly Man City. But if we could agree on that. No, we're not including that. Oh. <sighs> if he plays 50 games for us, he's probably worth it. It's a lot of money, but he is English. We'll make the offer because he's English. How's our transfer debt looking? Not disastrous. Net debt looking even more not disastrous. I think we definitely need him. And then one more midfielder. And we don't need to do a lot of business this summer. I think the rest of the summer plans is going to be about finding stars like the guy we saw at Manchester City an episode or two ago. Um, the young defender, the young Spanish defender who's ended up being the Premier League's best player after two years. We're just looking for players like that. Not necessarily in any particular position. Just finding the best players we can find. I mean, Hoyenhal's only showing as being a two and a half star keeper now. I just can't imagine a scenario where we replace him. But old Kev, not as in I am an old man called Kev, the previous version of me would look at that star rating and rule him out. I'd like to think I've evolved to the point where Hoyenhal's brilliant. Lovrich is great when he comes in as well. We don't need a better goalkeeper. We'll just see what we can see. Transfers. Well, there you go. We have our midfield player, Marco Bindi, 23 years old, coming in from, I guess, some kind of creator club situation over in Italy. Never heard of him. Uh, but Marco Bindi, four-star current ability, five-star potential. He's a central midfielder who can play that Mazzala role. Um, he can also play the box-to-box -box midfielder role if need be, but I've got him earmarked to play the Mazzala role, potentially. He can also play as an attacking midfielder as well. Um, he's uh, Why am I pressing all the wrong buttons? And he is right up there as a four-star um, current ability attacking midfielder as well. So going to provide a little bit of competition for Schultz in attacking midfield as well. You can see he is considerably better than any other central midfielder we've got at the club. He's considered a leading Premier League player, not quite an elite player yet, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but he's been at Lazio for a little while, £43.5 million pounds. Um, I think it's like 36 million up front, so it's not even all on the never-never this time. I'm learning my lesson. Um, that being said, I did also confirm the signing of uh, Lewis Shepard as well, so he's also joining us in that £60 million deal, and I'm trying to bring in Sandra Tonali on a free transfer from Chelsea as well. I'm one of a number of clubs who are in for him. Uh, Manchester United and Atalanta have made offers for him as well. I know I've just said we don't need old men anymore, but... You're telling me you don't want that sat at the base of the midfield for a Champions League win. We could probably handle a season of Sandro Tonali. Um, to balance all of that out, uh, we have sold... Um, where is he? Um, Alejandro Salinas has been sold to Fulham for £18 million. He dropped down to two and a half star current ability, three star potential. He was homegrown in England, so it wasn't a very easy decision. But looking at the homegrown status of our players now... We are starting to get to the point where... That's the wrong screen. We are starting to get to the point where a few more of them are earning homegrown status and it's becoming less of an issue. Um, so we've got Romero, who is now homegrown at club. Uh, Padron gets there this summer. Um, Tipple is already there. Obviously, Shepard is already there. Tammy Abraham is leaving, but one, two, three, four. We could probably do with one more English player in, but we have the four homegrown in nation right there. That seems fine to me. We probably need to move on, especially if we bring in Tonali as well. Gilberto Carlos probably needs to leave, or Yedro. How has Yedro got on on his season out on loan? Not spectacular. We'll make a decision whether Yedro or Gilberto Carlos are the one that move on, moves on, because obviously Shepard can play in the attacking midfield role. Schultz is our starter there, and with, um, with Bindi coming in, also able to play there. 
we've quite overloaded in players who can play in attacking midfield. We have also turned down a £30 million offer from Southampton for Griffin Diaz, who's actually quite keen to go there. I'm not particularly keen for him to go. Is he homegrown? He's not. We've obviously signed him a little bit older. Um, but if, if that offer gets much bigger, then I'm not against him leaving because he's still not an established starter for us at 23. I'm also pretty happy to keep him around as well. So we're pretty comfortable either way on there. We've got an offer for one of our name in the game players here. And to be honest, with only three stars of current ability, we'll probably let him go and have a career out at Crystal Palace. Here we go then, boys and girls. Sandro Tonali is in as well. That is three permanent midfield signings this summer. Um, obviously, Luke Shepard was already here. So two additions to the midfield uh, from the squad of last year. And I think it was definitely the area of the squad we needed to improve on. But Tonali at 34. He's only just turned 34 as well. Um, still a three and a half star current ability player. Um, he's better than Tipple and Shepard and Janacek in central midfield on his star rating. On As a defensive midfielder, it doesn't show me on the thing at the bottom because it's still broken. I suggest, in fact, we can go to this other screen, can't we? As a defensive midfielder, um, in fact, Bindi's better than him there as well. Well, Bindi's quite good, but Tanali is better than anyone else we've got. And for a year or two, to have him in, not just to play, but also, let's make sure he's doing some mentor. Oh, mentoring Padron is absolutely perfect. He's now homegrown at club. That is an excellent little mentoring relationship to have set up. Um, so Sandro Tonali is in. Um, have we got something else going? Oh, Lazio making an offer for Diaz. Diaz is actually out of contract at the end of the season. I have offered him a new deal, but some of these offers are getting quite large. We're still rejecting them at the moment, but we need to actually have a little look at this squad and make a decision on whether rejecting these offers is sensible based on the players we brought in. Griffin Diaz is a long, long way down this pecking order. Only got four-star potential now. He might be someone who is probably worth selling. Let's have a little look. If we put my custom view back on, and have a look at midfielders. Sort them by ability. So, midfield, we've got Bindi will be in central midfield, Tonali, DM, Shepard, central mid, Janicek, centre mid, Navarro, DM. So, DM is full now. We've got two of them. Tipple is another centre mid. And then Yedro, Carlos, and Schultz isn't showing on here for some reason because he doesn't play centre mid. Um, but Yedro, who's got loads of potential. So, we could probably, there's probably an argument for Diaz, Carlos, and Zamorano to all move on. No, I don't think any of them are homegrown in England. Zamorano might be, actually, because he was at City. I don't think he is. Hmm. Maybe we'll let Diaz go. Certainly don't think we need to sign anybody else this summer. Looking at the squad, midfield is where we needed to strengthen. We've strengthened midfield. I think signings-wise, we're done. It's just a decision now of whether or not we let some of these boys go. In fact, an easy way to find out is let's have a look to make sure we're going to be able to register them in the squad because if we're not going to fit them into the squad, then there really is no point in them being here. See, that suggests there might not be room for Griffin Diaz or Carlos or Noll or Zamorano in our Premier League squad. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. How has the situation got worse? I don't understand. Uh, right, so we need the two goalkeepers. And then left back, we've got Ua and Mura as the two left backs. Right back, Paviot and Romero, who is now homegrown at club. Centre back, Fernandez, Caesar, Noll. And then we've got Mura in there as well. Holding midfielder. Obviously, Tonali and Navarro as two. Centre mid, Bindi, Shepard, Janicek, Tipple. Attacking midfielder, Schultz. And then probably Yedro because of that potential that he's got. And then up front, Delgado, Luis, Casolari, Gaza. And it doesn't fit. Hmm. 
because Gaza's not a youngster anymore. He's the one who's got to come out, I think. I think we send Gaza out on loan because he's still only 22. We need to bring in a young English striker. So Gaza will look to loan. And we probably should have accepted that offer for Diaz because we're not going to fit him in. Because if we then get all of the players back on, what happens when the team gets older? You've got Diaz, Gaza, Carlos, Zamorano. A drone we can fit in because he's homegrown at club. Tammy Abraham will be retiring, so... Well, we can put him in for now. He won't actually be in there, but... Yeah, Diaz. We probably need to... Oh, I hope we can still get decent offers for him. Now we've been declining them. Let's just offer him out and see what happens. Gilberto Carlos will offer out. And Zamorano, we will offer out. In the meantime, is there a young English striker? We can grab Damien. Bayern Munich are just hoarding all of the strikers. We obviously, Damien's no use to us. We need a young English striker. So, striker who is homegrown in England. Ideal, ah, ideally young. Wolfgang Scheiber. Isn't he the guy we tried to get last summer? Or is this somebody else? No. How is he English? I guess he signed for Bournemouth quite young. Okay. So he's an elite striker. We don't need an elite striker. That's the one we tried to get last summer. Keegan Shrivers. He's probably... I mean, we want younger than that, really. We want somebody who doesn't mind playing as few games as um, as Gaza played last year. Hmm. Kevin Walker. We need to have a pot. We need to have. We need to find somebody. We need to have a little look. Seems like slim pickings at the moment, which is not ideal. Well, we've had a little bit of a clear out. I thought I had a genius plan, but the genius plan was gone wrong. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but we have sold the players we were looking to sell. Gaza has gone out on loan to Shakhtar for the season. Gilberto Carlos to America for $27.5 million. Zamorano to Dynamo Kiev, $25 million. And Griffin Diaz has gone to Lazio for $23 million. So we're actually at a net transfer profit so far this summer. So they're the boys who weren't going to be in our squad. I mentioned we needed a young English striker. Couldn't find one. But then, the master plan. Phil Foden, age 34, been released by Manchester City. Obviously, attacking midfielder. But Schultz can play up front. So I figured Schultz becomes part of the attacking four. Foden comes in. Everyone's happy. But Chelsea are in for him as well. And inexplicably, despite us as back-to-back -back Premier League champions offering him £235,000 a week, he's gone to Chelsea on £205,000 a week to not even play in the Champions League. I don't... Did they qualify for the Champions League? Maybe he doesn't think he's good enough for the Champions League anymore. Okay, they did. They must have finished third. <sighs> and compete with Mason Mount. Or well, I guess maybe play with Mason Mount, which might be the appeal. I guess, plan B then, let's go and get Mason Mount and do the exact same thing we were going to do with Foden. But do it with Mount instead. He's got a year left on his Chelsea contract, so I'll have to pay money for him. But the principle works exactly the same way. Is that mad? Can't believe my plan's fallen apart. We are now a player short of where we need to be. We do have money to spend now, but I'd rather have the player. I, I, can I have a player back, please? 29 million. But the squad is smaller than it was before. Oh, God. Now someone wants Pedro Luis and Casalare. Oh, it's all going wrong again. I hate the summer. Our search for a young up-and-coming striker continues, but just confirmation that Tammy Abraham is a hero. If you remember, we had him signed to a two-year deal on £110,000 a week, which he retired halfway through. Well, he's agreed to renegotiate his contract now he's just a coach down to £9,000 a week on a three-year deal. What a man. No longer the highest paid under-18s coach in the world. I just wish we could get him out of retirement. Um, we are trying... I mean, 
just so I can do something. I've talked about bringing Max Aaron's back for years. Um, he is still scouted as being as good as Paviot. Um, or Romero, Paviot, by the way, now a World Cup winner. Portugal have just won the World Cup. Um, Max Aaron's just handy to have around as a homegrown at club player and doesn't really solve any problem that we've got in the squad other than providing some cover at fullback on both sides and being an extra body in the um, in the Champions League squad. But not really the the marquee signing I was looking for. Obviously, we've already had a marquee signing this summer. I am just very aware that we are quite low on strikers in the squad. So... We need one. Or we could go back to the original plan of Schultz playing up front and bringing in a midfielder. That might work too. How many players are actually in this squad at the moment? Because I think we also probably need a centre-back as well. It's a 22-man squad, including Gaza. So 21-man squad to try and win the Premier League and Champions League when one of them, at the very least, Padron, probably still isn't ready for football. Romero's still a little way away as well. So we're effectively a 19-man squad. I don't think Noel will get into the Champions League squad because I think we're still struggling for numbers there as well. An 18 man, so we won't even be able to fill a bench in the Champions League. We've got nothing in the youth team. We need some players. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Obviously, I mean, it's, I was going to say, obviously, it's a massive pay rise. It's actually not a massive pay rise. I think my new non to legend rules are that I can't do both at the same time because I think that breaks realism. And I don't think it's a big enough pay rise for me to leave Norwich without a Champions League win. So respectfully, England, this time I decline you. That's not to say I might not be interested in the future, but right now we're staying at Norwich. Dortmund, by the way, still haven't sacked Brendan Rodgers. So we're not going to Dortmund this summer either. One more year. Well, this is what's known in the trade as a panic signing, a very expensive panic signing. Uh, Federico Sioni, um, who is homegrown in England, homegrown at Southampton specifically. Um, he's a three and a half star current ability striker, got 20 caps for Argentina, scored eight goals. And to be fair, he's come in with an incredibly high value. And um, we've signed him for 64 million. Um, he's been at Wolves for the last four years. He's a support striker. So um, he's going to be playing when he plays as our deep lying forward just as our fourth striker he'll only ever realistically be an option from the bench um unless he's really really good and somehow forces his way past pedro luis as delgado's partner but that seems unlikely it's a lot of money to pay for a backup but we needed a homegrown player max aarons is in as well he is back so that tiny squad we were talking about before is slowly but surely starting to become a slightly bigger squad with some homegrown players in there. But that was a lot of money to have to spend on a backup striker. And when you compare, and when you also factor in the fact we've had to do Lewis Shepard this summer, we have just paid a lot of homegrown player tax there because they're players who just aren't worth the price we've paid for them. But we've had to do it because we had to get the homegrown players in. And we've lost some. I mean, I would rather have. I would rather have Gilberto Carlos in the squad than Lewis Shepard, for example. Sadness and financial ruin as we run up more transfer debt as well. But I think that squad is now finished because we can't afford anyone. So to be fair, we've still got, inexplicably, £27 million to spend, of course, or £15 million to spend. So maybe it's not all over. Maybe, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to bring in one more centre-back, I think, if we can find a homegrown centre-back. I'm already regretting selling Salinas, who, although he wasn't great, would have been fine as just an option to throw into the Champions League squad if we can't fit Noll into it. <sighs> we have squeezed one more player in, Rodrigo Dinamarco, who is another one who is homegrown in England, homegrown at Brentford. He's 23 years old. Been at Brentford for the last five years, played in the Championship for them last year, but does have a few seasons in the Premier League under his belt. He's a six foot one centre back, three star current ability, four star potential. Again, we've played over, paid way over the odds for the fact that he's homegrown. The idea of playing paying fifty six million pound for an uncapped twenty three year old Brazilian is ridiculous, especially when he's coming in to be our fourth choice centre back, or. Maybe third choice. He might get the nod ahead of Noel. We'll see. This might spend spell the end for Noel. We'll see how things develop. We have got Fernandez, Mura, Caesar, 
Dinamarco and Noll, who can all play centre back for us now. So Diego Noll might be done. I'm not rushing to thin the squad out again when at the moment um, we can register all these players in. We're probably not going to be able to for the Champions League. Um, oh, in actual fact, we can. We can get all of them into a Champions League squad. So no reason to move Noll on. We might as well keep him here as he's going to be able to fit into both squads. What we could potentially do if we had the money, which we don't. We are fully spent up now. And I know I've said that already. But we are fully, fully spent up now. But if a player did come along now who was not homegrown, we could potentially swap them in their squad spot for Noll. Um, I'm trying to... That doesn't quite work. So, we, like, for example, we could bring Gaza back from his loan. No point doing that now because we've signed Sioni. It's an option. It's doing so, bringing Gaza back into the team next year, maybe. Um, but that is now a finished squad, a finished summer of transfers. Um, much busier than I expected it to be. £100 million net spend. Um, five first-team players have come in, really. Shepard, obviously, was already here. Um, Aaron's is going to be a backup player, so I guess he doesn't count as first team. And to be fair, Sioni and Dinamarco are backup players as well. The only one who's going to come in and start is Sandro Tonali. And he'll probably start now in the Community Shield. I didn't realise we were literally just before Community Shield kickoff. I hit continue, thinking we had to get to the Community Shield, and here we are. It's Community Shield day. So this is the team to face Manchester City in the Community Shield. It's Hoy and Hal in goal. A back four of Aranur, Mura, Fernandez, and Paviot Tonali making his debut at the base of the midfield with Bindi making his debut um, ahead of him. Bindi was actually signed officially last season. That's why he wasn't showing on that list before. A tipple alongside him and then Schultz behind Pedro Luis and Delgado. Um, we have got the majority of the new players on the bench so that we can have a little look at them um, later on in the match. Obviously, we get six substitutions that we're able to make in a uh, Community Shield game and we will make all of them because we're going to want to have a look at all of these players, I'm the only one who misses out. And he needs to get used to it because he is effectively third third choice fullback on both sides is Max Ahrens. I mean, he's not here to play. He's here to just be a Norwich homegrown player because that's a useful thing for us to have. Uh, Pedro Luis across to Tipple and there's Etienne Tipple within the first three minutes with all these new midfielders arriving just to say, look, just, just remember everybody, I'm still the man around here. You've been talking about upgrading this midfield for a little while. You've now done it. Let's not let's not pretend that that means I'm not going to be in the team. I'm Etienne Tipple and have another goal at Wembley. Thank you very much, Mr. Tipple. Lovely start to the match. Um, Manchester City are, are likely to want to test how they're developing against us because um, obviously they're trying to regain their spot as the dominant team in England, a position we've taken from them. Over the last couple of years, I didn't actually look to see if they won the Champions League. They're probably laughing if they did. Uh, Mbappe is in. Old man Mbappe, and that is defensive chaos. I think it's been disallowed. It hasn't been disallowed. It's a Paviot own goal. World Cup winner Paviot. And I've had a couple of these new boys who've arrived this summer when they come in and ask for their initial promises, asking me to upgrade the goalkeeper. We are going to have to keep an eye on Hoyenhal. He's absolutely not at fault there. He's still a hero as far as I'm concerned. But if he's... I, I certainly don't think on the evidence we've seen so far that he's holding us back from winning the Champions League. But I do know, after many years of playing football manager, sometimes a game seemingly just like that will decide that a goalkeeper is going to start making loads of mistakes. And all of a sudden, despite them being great for years, they end up looking awful. And I hope that's not happened to Hoy and Hal as the rest of the squad has developed on beyond him, even though traditionally he was playing well above his star rating level to begin with. So we're keeping him for now. But it is a situation that we're going to have to monitor and hopefully not cost us a season. We shall see. Fernandez heading clear to Bindi. First chance to have a look at him. He plays it forward to Delgado, who is a newly appointed vice captain to us, for us, a vice captain to, of course, Pedro Luis, who is our captain, our two best players, our two leaders. Um, and now Bindi on the right-hand side cuts it back to Paviot. Cross comes in. Tipple is there again. And Tipple continues to send his message about who is the Norwich City midfield. He is the Norwich City midfield. 2-1, 15 minutes gone. They get their money's worth at Wembley today. It's end-to-end -end stuff. Three goals inside the first 15 minutes. 
and we're both threatening and apparently not bothering to defend, which is the ideal thing to do for a, a season opener at Wembley. City with a, the other city with a corner now. And it's, I mean, we've let it bounce in the penalty area. Tonali's the one who eventually gets it clear. And now Delgado turns and runs, but is cut off relatively easily by the Manchester City defender. And um, they're coming at us again here, though. Um, if we could get a tackle in, that'd be super. How is Adeyemi still playing? I mean, they've got Adeyemi and Mbappe in the team still. I know I'm sat here saying, moaning about that with Tonali in my team. But we're, what, 12, 13 years in the future now? These boys need to give up. Tammy Abraham's retired now. Tammy Abraham, I mean, these guys spent their entire career trying to be as good as Tammy Abraham. None of them quite got there. Uh, but I think now that Tammy's retired, they're obviously trying to stretch it out for one more year, trying to make a point. It's a point they won't succeed in making. None of them are on Tammy's level, but they are still plugging away. Cross comes in, or very deep cross. Schultz runs it a little bit wider than I would have hoped he would do. I think he was trying to get it onto his right foot. In the end, it is a left-footed shot anyway. Leads to a corner, but he couldn't quite get the angle he wanted to get that early shot away. Murrah is there, and his header goes wide. Still 2-1, 36 minutes gone, and it continues to be end-to-end -end stuff. This is awesome. Um, Aaron Ur playing it to uh, Tonali from the throw, and now Aaron Ur trying to get down that left-hand side, but is cut off easily again. They're, they're dealing with our runs from our fullbacks quite easily. Um, that most recent chance, the one for Schultz, Paviot hit the cross. I think it was Paviot, it might have been Bindi, but the cross was hit very early. Anytime we try and get into those wide areas, they seem to be dealing with us quite comfortably. Right, we're going to give this 10, 15 minutes at the start of this second half before we make our first wave of substitutions and start having a look at some more of these new faces that we've brought in this summer. Get some debuts done. Nothing quite like making your debut at Wembley. It's Manchester City on the attack again. Of course, they've lost club legend Phil Foden this summer who has uh, done a, what I think what's known in the trade as a reverse Frank Lampard, and after an entire career at Manchester City, has left for the payday at Chelsea um, to finish off. His, I mean, he, I can't even say that. We were offering him more money. He obviously just fancied playing for Chelsea. Um, that is a weird attempt at a pass there. He's given the ball straight back to Man City, and now Mbappe on the left crosses over to this guy called Munia, and they've got, that's the guy who's been cutting Aaron Ur out all game long. Koonin, their right back, he seems quite useful. I don't care for it. I don't want to see the replay particularly. I'm not going to watch it. Um, they have certainly got themselves back into this game in the second half, and it is now 3-2. Carlos Gonzalez is another defender, another young defender that I was looking at this summer. He's home Because he's homegrown in England, homegrown at City, they have been doing a very good job. While we've been messing around signing Tammy Abraham and Sandro Tonali and having a couple of years of winning the league. They've done an excellent job of bringing in young players, making them homegrown, developing them into players who are better than ours. I hope this doesn't spell the end of our couple of season run of dominance because that would make me sad. Right, let's get some of these new boys on and have a little look at them. Um, Delgado's had a really poor game today. So we'll do those three initially. So Bindi gets to play in the more attacking role that he wants to play in Shepard alongside him. And um, we've got Dinamarco coming on to play at the back. He wants to be a ball-playing defender on cover. Well, I'm afraid Murrah's already doing that today. And Sioni, Sioni, he's coming on to play alongside Pedro Luis up front. Remember, natural deep-lying forward. First one we've had at the club. First one we've had at the club, realistically, since Tammy Abraham because he was old. That was basically what his role was. Right. Corner. Schultz. After this, we're going to make our final three changes and Murrah is there. How on earth is that his third goal of the season already? Has Murrah scored a hat-trick today and I've not realised it? I don't think that's what's happened. We're going to, we'll have a look from the other angle. And no, he hasn't. Because Tipple got the other two. Of course, I remember. So how is that Murrah's third goal of the season? It must be counting goals at the World Cup. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what it's counting. Right, Bindi's going to come off for Janicek. Um, and then Aaron Ur is going to come off for Caesar. Murrah's going to go out to left back. And then for my final trick, we're going to get Casolare on. And he'll come on for Pedro Luis. 
He'll play as the more attacking of the two. And hopefully he'll grab a goal because we know Casolare is always good for a goal when he comes off the bench in a big match. It's what he does. He keeps getting compared in the comment section. He's our Divock Origi and I guess I can't really argue. Uh, Cross comes in for City and they are still creating a frustrating number of chances. Um, oh my word. They've mishit that a little bit and we've got away with it. But 3-3... Three, three, 10 minutes ago. I don't really want a penalty shootout. If that could be avoided, please and thank you. Um, looks like they've taken off Mbappe in the run into a penalty shootout there. And Adiemi. That's interesting. Penalties on the horizon. Mbappe and Adiemi have gone off. Although, to be fair, we've taken off Pedro Luis and uh, Delgado. So, obviously, neither of us taking this particularly seriously. I want a performance here from Hoyenhal. I want him to show me that I was wrong to doubt him. There he is. Save number one. It's, if he's the hero of this shootout, it removes all doubt forevermore. He is the man, despite only being two and a half stars. Schultz. And his penalty saved as well. That's alarming. This time last year, he'd already scored about eight goals. He started last season in incredible goal-scoring form. Um, the guy who came on for Mbappe, Flynn, whacks it into the back of the, the net so hard that Oyenhow doesn't even move for it. And now Sioni, the guy who's coming from Wolves this summer, has the opportunity to get the ball in the back of the net for Norwich for the first time, and he balls it up. He'll forever be fourth choice now. Casalare moves back up above him in the pecking order. Tete is a player that I was looking at this summer, homegrown again. I um, couldn't afford him, worth about £200 million, and he scores. Now, Sandro Tonali, on his debut, please score the penalty, because otherwise I'm a little bit alarmed about what's going on. He does score the penalty. 2-1 now. Tonali, of course, part of the player merry-go-round between us, City and Chelsea this summer. He's, he came in on a free from Chelsea. Uh, Mounier for City. And now we need uh, we need to score here and then have a Hoy and Hal moment and then score again just to get this into sudden death penalties. So I'm not massively rating our chances. Um, Liam Shepard, not Liam, Lewis Shepard, the, uh, the former Manchester City man, we have a point to prove, and he scores. Now we need Hoyenhal. Come on. Remember what we said? If you were the hero of the penalty shootout, it removes all doubt forevermore. This is your moment. Kim Christian Hoyenhal against some guy called Dobra. Come on. You've got to be better than a guy called Dobra. Surely that's not even a name. Surely it's not a name. You called Dobra in the comments. I apologise a little bit. Not fully, because he scored... Um, we don't need to see them getting presented with the trophy. We won that last year. A little bit sad that we didn't win it this year. I hope Man City aren't back because that is our squad weaker than it was last year. It's more homegrown. Is it weaker? I don't think it is. I think we are a stronger squad now. Maybe is Sioni an upgrade on Abraham? Certainly last season's Abraham he is. Uh, right. We're just going to run it through until the first day of the season just to make sure no other transfer shenanigans happen. But then we will uh, do a quick summary at the end and wrap things up. Oh, well, no transfer shenanigans going into the first day of the season. We have had injury shenanigans. Caio Cesar's has broken his leg. He's going to be out until nearly Christmas. And we've also got Navarro injured. Aaron Ur is going to be out for the first couple of weeks of the season. Schultz has picked up a knock as well. So it's going to be a slightly different looking team starting the season in tomorrow's episode. But... Glad we signed Dinamarco. He's straight in and making his full debut on the first day of the new season. See? Genius. I still haven't decided if it's a good summer or not. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, if we have a look at the season preview, the media think we'll finish fifth. So still not recognising the fact we're back-to-back -back Premier League winners. Although good to see that uh, Sergio Delgado is now considered the best player in the Premier League. About time to our second best player, still Pedro Luis, but Delgado, I mean, surely best player in the world at this point. Maybe, surely, hopefully. Did he win anything like that? UEFA Men's Player of the Year. Uh, World Cup Golden Ball runner-up. He's not won the Ballon d'Or yet. Oh, FIFA shortlisted for FIFA Men's Best Player, but didn't win it. Surely he's, uh, Erling Haaland has dominated that for a little while, hasn't he? 
surely there's got to be a conversation about Sergio Delgado for some of these some of these things coming up. If Mbappe and Makoko are in there and neither of them are as good as and neither of them are as good as Delgado in the Premier League, it is interesting to see that Juventus and Bayern are dominating this. Two teams we played in the Champions League last year. Is the Premier League even the best league in the world anymore? Is it just that those two teams are particularly overpowered? Yeah, we're the highest reputation team, but the best team from the fourth and the third league are better than us and have loads of better players, apparently. It will be fine. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.